he's here. Yo, yo. Hi. She's got a show. Hey, little Grace, how are you? I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. Just got off work. You know, I was stuck to the ground all day. Always. You're always putting in that work, though. Well, yeah, I'm always trying. No, you're doing it. You're doing it. So, Lil Royce, the numbers are going up. People are so excited. We had we had very little promo. I don't know. People don't realize this before yeah. this. This was a tight turnaround. And I want to say, before we get too deep into this, how much I appreciate you and the great people at NBC for presenting this opportunity for me to have this exclusive conversation with you. It's two parts. Tonight is just a preview. We just want to give a little taste, no spoilers, yeah. because they are in for an amazing episode of Chicago PD. So what I would like to do, I want to get these numbers up because I think we can do better than this. So LaRoyce and everyone that is on this live with us, there is a LaRoyce and everyone else, there is an icon at the bottom of your screen if you're on a phone. It looks like a paper right, clip. Right. If you hit that, it will allow right, right. you to DM as many people, whatever the, the limit is, they'll let you know. And right, then right. it will send them a DM and then they will be notified that they can join this live. So I would love for LaRoyce to do that. I'm going to do that. And I want everyone that's on this live with us, let's get these numbers up because we're about to have a really, really important, necessary conversation and you don't want anyone to miss it. So let's do that. LaRoyce, when you're done with that, let me know. And everyone in the comments, after you do that, throw a thumbs up. Throw a thumbs up in the comments. Right, right. So we know that you all are here and you're supporting. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm throwing it out there. I'm throwing it out there. I love it. <laughs> And as soon as you're done, then just let me know and we'll get started. I'm done. Let's do our thing. Okay. So I just <laughs> sent mine and I see the thumbs up. Thank you to everybody out there that also did that for us. So, Lil Royce, I watched, yes, man. I watched courtesy of NBC. They sent me the episode, Protect and Serve, that airs tonight. I got to watch it in advance Hold up. last night. Yes, Hold man. up. How they send it to you and they ain't send it to me? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble, but they sent it to me, so I've seen it. And okay, how you feel about it? What did you say? How you feel about it? I was disgusted. I was angry. Mm-hmm. I was hurt. Mm-hmm. I was happy and I was hopeful. And wow. you wanna and Laura, you wanna know how my heart sounded while I was watching? Yeah. All the time. It picked up. It picked up. Yeah. It great acting. It picked up the more drama, the more intensity. So again, there will be no spoiler alerts. But if you have never seen Chicago PD, I'm telling you this right now, you need to watch tonight. And the thing that I love, LaRoyce, about this episode, Protect mm -hmm. the Earth, that airs tonight at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, is that if you've never seen the show before, you can jump in this episode and the, the storyline is comprehensible for anyone. You yeah. can get in, everyone is relatable, and you will learn the characters really quickly and where their perspective is. So let me turn it over to you, Loris. What do you want? What message do you want fans to get from this powerful episode of Chicago PD? Yeah, well, um, wow. You know, you, what, everything you said about it is is exactly what I think um, we'll unpack, you know what I'm saying, this evening. Because it's layered up, you know, so for you to express um, all the different emotions that the episode took you through is um, I think that's exactly what people should expect. They should expect to feel most of them. You know what I mean? Um, for, for me, I think the episode is, is very much about a layer of empathy that I think is neglected sometimes um, when we think about police officers and, and, and how the job is to be done, you know? Um, for the communities that 
the police protect and serve, oftentimes I think that empathy is the first thing that um, that that they should hold on to. And without empathy, uh, we we see what can happen. You know, um, unfortunately, uh, black lives can be on the tragic end of, of of a situation that only empathy could have protected them from. You know, so. Um, when we're not empathetic towards the communities we protect and serve, oftentimes uh, fear creeps in in ways that can be detrimental. Um, uh, uh, the way we prejudge, you know, a person because of the situation um, can can be detrimental. So um, I, I learned a lot about about the the police officer's experience within you know within that situation so um but but with what we learn i i think this episode sets us up as an audience of chicago pd to unlearn as well you know uh, yeah. and and that's really what i want people people to do is, is unlearn the things that they thought to be true before they watched this episode um, I think Chicago PD does a great job of unpacking these issues um, and, and moving forward. I think that Chicago PD and our audience are ready to unlearn the same issues. And that's Lawrence, why I said hopeful. That was the last thing I left you with when I was describing my feelings about this episode is even though I started by saying I was disgusted and angry Mm -hmm. and very upset and disturbed during throughout some of the and I believe that because of the great writers mm -hmm. that work on the show they wanted me to feel that way they want people to feel this way so but I also again I feel hope so I would be remiss to not give the flowers that we should to Eric LaSalle who is the director and executive producer. This was his last episode that he produced and yeah. uh, worked on. And he's been with the show now for a few seasons. Mm -hmm. And so many people, you know, they know and they love him for from this, from his work on Chicago PD and other projects. So, I mean, just an incredible job from, again, production and the writers. Yeah. Incredible job. Incredible. You know, uh, this, was, this, was, this was a bittersweet experience for me um ever since eric lasalle has become a part of our show um he's been nothing but a, a, a powerful coach a mentor a teacher you know what i'm saying like all those things in one and to watch a brother um uh, have that kind of impact on the way that we story tell you know i mean has he i mean he's just taught me so much and also been a powerful example um of how to carry yourself and your art at the same time, you know? Um, every time Mary LaSalle directs an episode, the standard of storytelling car, where I told him like, dog, you gotta understand, it's not easy for a black man to do that. And thank God he didn't, because he wasn't even what he was looking for, and his son was there. And so that uncomfortable conversation unpacked a lot. So three seasons later, Eric LaSalle's last episode, it's, it's poetic, it's poetic that the biracial bromance that he started finds itself being tested. And that's a perfect segue, LaRoyce, to my next question. Yeah. Because I did some investigative work. I'm a journalist. You know, I, I, I have to do that. I got to put that work in. I went on social media. I went to mm -hmm. NBC Ch Chicago PD's new Instagram account, which mm -hmm. if, you follow, if you go over there, they can migrate. It's NBC One Chicago, I believe. Yeah. And the promo for tonight's episode, the comment section, your fans want to know what is up with the, you call it the rouge water, explain that, like what's going on with the dynamic of your relationship, like it, people are concerned that you and your partner may not be friends or families falling out, like, <laughs> ultimately can you give your fans something and explain the rouge water. Yeah, man. So Rosewater is the brotherhood, you know. Rosewater is um, a the partnership. Of both yeah, things. yeah, yeah. That's the combination of Rusek and Atwater, and um, and you know, I'll be remiss if I didn't say this. And you know, I hate being remiss. That uh, Patty, who plays Adam Rusek, is 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 truly a brother of mine. You know what I'm saying? 
um, Offset, him and I are extremely close. You know what I'm saying? Our families are close. Um, I've been to Red Wing, Minnesota multiple times, you know what I'm saying, and, and really got down with the Flugers. Um, my family affectionately calls him Pale Hawkins, you know what I'm saying, because that's, that, you know, that, that, like, that love is real. So um, it, it only makes sense that uh, the relationship and the rhythm that we have off screen um, has the opportunity to tell stories that are important you know, tell stories that can bridge gaps. And it's uncomfortable sometimes and it's awkward a little bit on set for him and I um, to to unpack these things, but we know that we're doing it for a good reason. We know that if these characters are beloved by, um, by a massive audience, that we have a massive opportunity to teach all of them how to, um, how to protect your brother. You know what I'm saying? Um, from a different background, you know what I'm saying? That, that comes from a different place. Um, this episode is about partnership unconditionally, about respect that's earned, you know what I'm saying? Trust that's learned, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so, you know, you, you see all of that get tested in this episode, but they, but they still have to, they still have to get the job done. Right. You see them work together anyway, um, which is, which is important. You know what I mean? Like that's that's exactly how it is on the field in real life. Um so so yeah, so 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 I'm 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 excited about how the, the, the audience responds and like I said, not not just about what we learn but what we unlearn at the same time. Well, I know again your fans have to appreciate hearing you say that because again, the comment section is thick with their concerns about you all's relationships so I, i'm really? glad you were able to address that they really you all really need to watch this episode so i want to i want to also this is a great caveat to what we just talked about and mm -hmm. showing love to back to the writers rooms so i feel like there's been such a great job the heart i feel like the heartbeat of a production is is in with the writers and i feel like you as actors like everyone has a, an important part in it like a body there's no piece of the body that's mm -hmm. not important everything is useful and it's important and i mm -hmm. feel like the writers have done such an exceptional job of with atwater in particular and with dealing with black issues because when i watch you I'm very happy that you're not you're you're not a joke. You're not taking this lightly that that these issues are happening within the black community. And mm -hmm. I love the voice, the character development that the writers are doing with you. And then very similar to who you are, Loris Hawkins, you have been able to do so much in the community. You do so much for the community and you're a voice for so many people and you use your platform very well. So I just want to know, can you kind of just talk about, and, and as we wrap up everything, because again, we have a part two, we will be continuing this discussion tomorrow, but I, coming wanna, back. I want to know, talk about the relationship with the writers and just their impact on the show, because they do such a great job, like all of you. Yeah. Um, but before I get on to that, I, I, I think I should say, and I saw one of the comments mention it, your hair does look great this evening. For Thank real, you snap. You snap. <laughs> Thank you. Shout out to my hairstylist, Lucky. He he deserves the credit. Copy that. Copy Lucky. Good job. Thank you. Um, thank you, whoever so, in the comments, and thank you, Little Royce. I appreciate you. Oh yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah. Repeat the questions. I was thrown off by your locks. I appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> um, no, my question was the writers. I oh yeah, the writers. Okay, yeah great job and talk about that relationship that you have with them and and yeah. and like i said because you are i mean you come off as a great guy on the show you are a great guy in real life and they're able to to do a great job of um of having everyone love you i don't know anyone that doesn't love outwater and i don't know very many people that don't love Laura's hot trust me so. trust me i ain't gonna lie to you i'm gonna have a handful of names that we <laughs> that we ain't gonna get into uh but no, nah, at the end of the day, um, you know, it, I, I would be remiss if I didn't shout out the writers of this episode, um, Ike Smith, uh, one of the one of the 
one of the few brothers um, involved in on, on the writing team uh, or teams in the One Chicago universe from the west side of Chicago. Um, he's definitely like a big bro and a mentor as well. Um, his 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 voice is extremely strong in this one. Uh, Gwen Segan, who's um, a very very talented and prolific writer, um, when they partner up and they write something, uh, it, it's, it's going to change minds. You know what I'm saying? It's going to have a powerful impact. Um, and you know, the trust between the writers' room and the cast um, over the years has just developed into something pretty strong. You know, so um, the way that the way they understand our voices, the way they um, the the way they understand even our movement, you know, um, they they can when when they're in the pocket, man, it's, it's they're hard to beat. So when, by the time we get the script, um, it's 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 easy, it's easy, and also, um, you know, Ike is just one of those kind of writers that. When he's done with a script and he sends it to set, he lets it go. Okay. And the next and the next part of the creative and collaborative process is essentially our interpretation of it and how it feels. You know? Um, and so with the respect and the trust that we have from writer's room to the cast, um, it, it allows us to tell stories like this. Um, you know, I'm 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 just grateful that that I get the opportunity to tell the story that is so important, you know what I'm saying? Significant. Like these are significant situations. Like, you know, I think for years, um, th this particular episode would be able to, would be able to teach generations, you know, would be able to unpack, uh, unpack issues for generations to learn from and unlearn from later on. Um, so yeah, so, you know, it's 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 hard to articulate sometimes, but you know the gratefulness and uh, the blessing of this opportunity, you know, is I, I I could never fathom that I'd be able to be in this kind of position. You know what I mean? I'm honored. I'm honored to just be able to do it. And like I said, I'm, I'm a better storyteller than I was before I started this show, and it's because episodes like these that stretch me, you know what I'm saying? That force honesty out of out, out of me, you know what I mean? Um, when you know that you're reflecting or representing a culture um, that's impacted and affected by these issues, it puts an extra, you know, it gives me extra enthusiasm to do the right thing and to do my best, you know? It's like the, the ancestors, you know, tap in. And, and and it's something that I think we can all be proud of. So yeah, so I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Well, Loris, again, you, I watched the episode multiple times and every single time I watched it, I was able to learn and see something different that I missed the previous time. Wow. And but the one thing that stayed consistent every time I saw it was my appreciation for you as a black man on this show and the way you represent, and not just black people, but the kindness and the humanity. Mm. And I I just, I, yeah, I just, I really need people to watch the show. If you're just joining this live, we are about to wrap up, but I want to say this, if you've never seen the show before, watch the show, tell your people to watch the show because it's, <laughs> I mean, the conversations that are going to come from this, I'm going to be live tweeting tonight, Little Royce. Like, I'm going to watch it live again, even though I've seen it. I'm going to okay. live tweet. So you all can check out my stories, and you'll see my Twitter handle. Join me in the discussion, because we need to support this man. We need to support this network that is doing a fantastic job of addressing issues that, are, that do matter. These storylines are actually headlines that we are reading currently. And I love it. I was, I loved it so much that even the characters that pissed me off when I watched this last night, it still gave me a feeling. And I, and I could kind of see there was one part I cannot wait to talk to you about, Loris, tomorrow. There's mm -hmm. this one scene where I'm like, this guy is out of his mind, but I 
kind of understand. So again, I know we need to wrap. I want to ask you this before we go. Two mm -hmm. things before we go. If you have a, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. rap battles. These creative, this yeah. creative content that you and your team have been producing on your Instagram, which I pin your Instagram at the bottom of the page. So if anyone does not know LaRoyce's personal account, follow him. It's at the bottom. Mine is at the bottom too. If you'd like to follow me, definitely watch NBC Chicago PD tonight. But LaRoyce, can you please explain the rap battles that you've been putting together, what that is on your Instagram? Yeah. Um, man, I got this idea to to create these poetic reflections of the episodes uh, through Atwater's perspective. Um, I, I, got, I got the great advice from a Chicago cop who I admire very much to read a book called Brotherhood of Corruption. And, um, and I'm not done with the book yet. It's, it's a book that I kind of just tapped in, tap into all the time on my, um, on my eBooks, you know what I'm saying? And, and I just kind of, uh, I cover ground a little bit at a time, but as I was reading the book initially, um, which was written by a former Chicago police officer who was once upon a time, very, very active on the field. And, learned a lot about the good and the bad and the ugly of the force, you know? And so he just wrote, um, you know, he wrote a book that depicted, you know, authentic stories from his career. And as I was reading it, I was like, oh man, it'd be kind of, it'd be kind of dope if Atwater did the same thing. Imagine if Atwater after, you know, after he gets done being a police, maybe he's a writer or, or, or starts to document you know what I'm saying? The, the things that he experiences. And if you know anything about that water, you know that it was probably important for him to start memorializing, you know, the things that happened to him just because the blue wall was coming at him. And so I was thinking about a lot at the same time. And I was like, you know what, it might be dope for us to do this. And, um, and I rapped with my team about it and they were able to help me elevate the idea. So I'm grateful for, uh, for Mr. Patton. And, um, and, and, and the support that I got from everybody, from everybody else to just let go, you know what I'm saying? It's been a dope way for me not to just reflect on that water, but to reflect on the Royce Hawkins. Like all the bars that are involved um, are close, close to home and close to the vest, you know? And so, yeah, so that's what the rap battles are. W-R-A-P, which is like, we've wrapped an episode, you know what I'm saying? But the battles represent the war that's going on. So, um, so as I wrap up each war, um, which is each episode, I just want the people to kind of get an idea of, of, of how I felt about it in a, in, a, in, in a way that is not just poetic, but um, impactful, you know? So, um, and, and it's crazy because every episode, I almost don't know, I almost don't know exactly what I'm going to say or how it's going to come off, you know? Um, but, but I've had a lot of fun exploring, exploring that space. And I and, and it's dope that people dig it, you know. I'm, I'm gonna keep doing my best. We'll see. But uh, the one after this episode, I don't know if it's gonna drop tonight or tomorrow. But I think the people are gonna dig it. Well, it's beautifully shot, beautifully edited, produced. Like every single thing about it, the, your words, the delivery. I mean, it is it is beautiful. So if you all have not seen his rap battle, go to his Instagram page check it out, like, comment, show him love because him and his team are doing some incredible things and creative things. And I, I, love, I love to see it going over and beyond. Thank so, you. LaRoyce, in closing, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to leave us with the last word before we go ahead and wrap this up? Because Chicago, I mean, once Chicago is about to start any minute, and everybody wants to tune in, we got to show love right, to right. Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, and Chicago PD. So anything you want to leave us with? Um, yeah, 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 I'm going to leave us with a toast. If anybody has a drink in their hand or, you know, something to sip on, okay, or, or just throw up the black power fist, most naturally, this is a toast to tonight's episode and in and, and honor um, of one of the greatest storytellers, I think, of our generation and one of the greatest stories ever told this evening. This is for a bittersweet swan song, well deserved. May, may the dreamers we deferred finally be heard.
Are you gonna bring it? Yeah. Hey. Uh, you got you in have it. to drink. You have to drink after. Right, right, right. And that, that was off the dome, ladies and gentlemen. And you're supposed to look in the person's eyes when you drink. Oh, you ain't noticed that I did that? No, I didn't. No, I was I was locked in with you a little bit. Okay. Um, because trust me, I know the history. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I I loved it. So again, you all need to come back tomorrow, right, Lawrence? You and I are gonna be back. We're going to go into great depth. We're going to break down. So we mm -hmm. have the pregame show, right? It's March Madness. We have the pregame show leading into like the that. game, which is the mm -hmm. episode. Then we're going to have yeah. the, the post-game yes. show tomorrow. And we're going to okay. break it down with you all once you all have seen it. I will be live tweeting on my Twitter account. I don't know if Loris will be doing the same, but you all can follow me and we can chat. And make sure you follow Leroy's. Make sure you follow NBC Chicago PD. Thank mm -hmm. you all so much for having me. And Leroy's, we're back. We got to, we're back. Tomorrow, what time are we back? What time are we back tomorrow? We are back tomorrow at uh, at 6.30 Central Standard Time. 6.30 Central Standard Time. What up, dog? Right here. Yep. And this is, this is Nucci. <laughs> this is Nucci. I'm like, which one is this? We have two. Miniature Pincher, so she wanted to get on here and say, good luck, Lawrence, you're the best. I, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. So for everyone out there, I'm going to save this episode. I'm going to save this interview um, to my Instagram account, and then from there, you guys can come back. You can share it. You can watch it. We strongly encourage you to do that, and we'll be back tomorrow. So, Lawrence, I'll talk to you in a minute. From the heart. From the heart. From the heart. We locked in.